done deal with this. I thought I was finally done with this, but he has returned. Our favorite mad scientist, the theorizer, has finally decided to crawl out of whatever evil hideout he has been dwelling in to rain down terror upon our world once again. I was wondering why I randomly suffered one of the most horrific nightmares of my life just the other day, and it's because the demon himself is Back to haunt me. Mort has officially evolved into the singular most powerful being, both fiction and reality, that our universe has ever seen. An interdimensional multiversal godlike being set to destroy our world. Meanwhile, there is a secret underground society of people with foot fetishes that are trying to prevent the animals from becoming more intelligent and enslaving all of humanity. It seems there are two different parties at play here trying to take over the universe, and if anybody's gonna be doing that, it's gonna be me. I don't know how much more worse this could possibly get. I don't know how much more unhinged this journey is going to get, but I don't think any of us are actually ready. Mort Theory Part 26. I want you to think about that for a second. I want you to think about that for a second. It took 26 episodes for us to fully be able to comprehend the true nature, the true magnitude of this calamity here that we're dealing with. Just 26 episodes of pure tomfoolery. I am exhausted. What is life? What is existence? Just what the f It's been a while. It's, it's, it's been a while since we've heard the theorizer's beautiful, golden, angelic voice gifted straight from the gods. So soothing, it'll put a baby right to sleep and your grandma. But I don't know if I should be excited for that or if I should be mortally terrified. We are gonna be in for an experience. Have I done to myself? These are all existence. I'm exhausted. What is life? What is existence? I ask Just myself that every day. Have I done to myself? These are all important questions that I'm sure will be answered given time. Relevant to my I'm life. So far gone what am I doing to myself, dude? Any last shred of hope had by the saintliest optimist has died and decayed. My only. Con that is beautiful. Any last shred of hope had by the saintless optimist has died and decayed. Like, this man's a philosopher. This, this, this man is a, is a philosopher. And I, I think that is, that is a very bad thing. That is a, that is a, um, a pure maniac with words of wisdom that could influence any mind, dude. Like, this, this dude theorizer could become a cult leader. He, tr he truly could. Like, when you say things like this, I would listen to you. I would, I'm absolutely listening to you. If you say things like this, you sound so smart. I'm, I'm listening to you, you know? You know, you you are the Messiah sent sent from sent from Jesus. We must follow all of your wisdom. I must murder my entire family, burn down my house, strip down naked, and go live in the middle of the woods in a shack. I'll do it, dude. Somebody like that convinces me. Had by the saintliest optimist has died and decayed. My only concern now is the newbies. So if you are new here, well, where do I begin? I'm so I sorry. I fictional- I didn't even think about that. There's probably people who are watching this that have no idea what's going on right now. And to those of you who are in that category, I am so sorry. Because, oh my dear God. Oh my dear God. You have no idea the trauma that we have experienced going through this theory, dude. You have no, you, you have no idea. The newbies. So if you are new here, well, where do I begin? 
I analyze fictional movies and shows, try to figure out their worlds, their characters, their secret plots, all manner of lore and backstories. Three years ago, I decided to take on Mort from Madagascar and figure out what the hell was wrong with him, because there's actually a whole spin-off show where he was one of the main characters, and the writers just went completely off the rails and this is a whole... made him insane and complicated and terrifying. This is a, this is like a, this is a, this is not a rabbit hole, okay? This is a this is a this is a, a abyss. This is a this is an abyss, dude. A, ne a never-ending, bottomless abyss. What with demons lurking in the darkness, dude? I'm telling you. This, this mort, this is, this is, this will consume your life. This will, it, like, you, dude. Completely off the rails and made him insane and complicated and terrifying just for kicks. Analyzing this little character has actually taken its toll on me because somehow and me it too. ridiculously I will never keeps look getting at deeper Zay. and deeper. Ever. And then I managed to tie it back into the rest of DreamWorks and all of their other films, it, it's its unbelievable. And as crazy as it may sound, this is actually part 26 of the series. No, I'm not joking. I will link the whole playlist above now. It's pretty straightforward to watch, but devastating to comprehend. And we are something like seven or eight hours in at this point. I recently added parts 24 and 25, which are in fact older theories I made on Rise of the Guardians and Kung Fu Panda because they connect into now. I've been on a giant hiatus because I can't even process all of this, and I pray that you're caught up. I don't blame because you. Because from this point forward, I'm going to enter my zone, and I'm not slowing down When you're down dealing with something like this, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he was forced to, to be in solitary confinement. Because this whole thing is insane. I don't, I don't know how he, has, he still has some type of stability Hello. going on in his brain. I'm the theorizer. And last we spoke here, you bore witness to the best theory video in a By the way! It's been a while since I said this. If you haven't already, be sure you guys go over to the theorizer's channel. You know the deal. Go give him a big old fat juicy spanking on his like and sub, dude. He told me personally. He said, Chris, I love it. When, you're, when your viewers go over my stuff and give me big old juicy spankings on my likes and subs, dude. He loves it. The Theorizer. He loves it. And last we spoke here, you bore witness to the best theory video in existence, part 23. Even though I've <laughs> taken two years to recover, today will be fallout from part 23, plus tying things into the renewed life of 24 and 25, followed by even more new evidence. Then I'm going to hit you with yet another customary series of plot twists and answers, but if you've seen part 23, then honestly, you're just as deep in this as I am, oh and I've God. got you right where I want you. So first, how on earth could Mort be the hero this whole time? I said this when we last spoke, and well, it's quite simple. Just take a look at everything he's done in comparison to the France-established Exterminator Terminators. While he is shifty, he seems to be controlled primarily by entities such as Smart Mort, who keep the unruly variants in check. Mort as a whole is just death. No big deal, not really. He's supposed to be impartial. He reaps the souls of those who need it. He's mischievous, but he has his heroic moments. And he's not exactly on par with framing animals on his wall or installing deep filter turbos. I think a lot of my irrational hatred for Mort has deluded me. Maybe. We're at a crossroads here. Before we can get solid on his morals, I have to also discuss the ramifications of this so-called backwards timeline I pulled out of my ass. It's a yeah, lot, part dude. 23, you'll like, remember it slowly dawned on this me This is the, one of those uh, things where, like, you, you really gotta, you really gotta know everything that's going on up to this point, dude. Like, evil, evil more, dude, the whole multiverse of more inside of his own mind, and he's like at war with himself, dude, and there's an evil Mort going around, and he's like killing all the other Morts, dude. There's a lot going on, dude. All Hail King Julian is the wildest show I've ever seen in my life. The, the wildest show I've ever seen in my life. The timeline could either be forwards or backwards. There's a good chance of both. It's equally possible. There's plenty of signs indicating that humans slowly devolve because of a variety of factors related to food, sky god's feet, you know the drill. Humans are getting 
weaker, fatter. Technology is doing everything for them. They're eating too much. And this whole theme of evolution and de-evolution is central to almost every single DreamWorks movie. It's a critical linchpin! <sighs> what about it, dude? Wally is the end! Can do Wally this. is the, is the end stay period. Calm. I know I can do it. We're all going to be, be, be fat. We're all going to be fat on, 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 a, on, a space, on a spaceship floating around the orbit of Mars, dude. It was all built, it was all built by Elon. It was, all, it was all built. Elon found a way to make himself immortal. Like the fucking Zordon from Power Rangers, dude. That's Elon. He's, he's fucking, he uploaded himself into some AI shit. Threw himself into a computer and now he's everywhere. And now he's, he's in your he's in your TV, he's on your cell phones, dude. And you're, we're all the orbiting, we're all orbiting fucking Mars. We're all orbiting Mars, fat as hell, j robots running our lives, dude. While the a super advanced society of of kung fu fighting animals, walking on two legs and speaking English, is flourishing down on Earth, dude. That's what's gonna happen. Fairly competent humans in the B movie Megamind Turbo, but then they start to get more and more picky and subservient and idiotic, like in Over the Hedge in Madagascar. Shrek and How to Train Your Dragon are both sort of anomalies to be discussed, but I mean anything involving a literally regressed humanity is of suspicious placement. But if something's at the end of the timeline, you'll tend to see intelligent animals and desperate footmen littered throughout the movies. At the tail end, we'd be left with Kung Fu Panda, which is not only peak animal intelligence, but is also utterly devoid of any human traces. Obviously, this is a general outline, and prehistory with dumb animals can still exist, so this is not a specific timeline with exact dates. Yet. You see, for that, I'd have to watch every single... This seems... This almost seems like a reoccurring theme in children's entertainment programming. Why is this a thing, dude? Think about it. We saw this same thing in... In the in the in that in that SpongeBob theory, right? In that Alex Bale in that Alex Bale theory, right? When we start with the the war, right? With the right the primitive fish versus the advanced fish, right? And the whole thing about Mr. Krabs and Pearl's mom, and and, and he's got trophies in his house. We know, we know. If you don't know, then you need to know. But if you know, then you know, right? If you don't know, you need to know. And if you know, now you know, right? But why is this a thing? Why is this like a reoccurring thing of one society of beings becoming more advanced than the other society so they just want to overthrow the other fucking society? They just want to kill all, go to war, eradicate all of them, enslave them, and, and, and dominate, dude. This is like this is this is like a this is like a a, a reoccurring theme, dude. DreamWorks <laughs> movie and every single DreamWorks spin-off show, and then analyze each of them to their cores. <sighs> that means I'd have to watch all Hill King Julian all over again, which is why I've been holding off on posting this. Because that show gives me genuine panic attacks! So I have an idea. I will work my way through parts of all Hail King Julian again, but overall speaking, and certainly for all other DreamWorks properties following this video, I'm just going to keep relying on you guys. There's simply too much there to discuss. It's far too vast. Circling back, it's insane to think about this concept of the whole, you know, my species is smarter than your species, so I'm gonna, you know, try to eradicate your entire species and take control of the world. You know, there have been a couple of real-life historical figures that have done that very same thing. Now that I think about it, they've done that very same thing, and we, we've learned about them, dude. We've, we've, we've learned about them, dude. Right? There was a guy who was, a guy who was infamous for doing it in Germany, bro. Like, this is insane. That they're just, they're just, this is just... Again, but overall speaking, and certainly for all other DreamWorks properties man. following this video, I'm just going to keep relying on you guys. There's simply too much there to discuss. It's far too vast for even 100 parts. But now we have the tools to sort this. You know what evidence you need to comment. You know how to do it. And if it's relevant enough, I'll incorporate it into a future part. The logic segments where I sort out all the plot holes will be the most complicated, painstaking, and difficult set of videos you will ever be subjected to in the history of YouTube, and I guarantee half of you will dip out midway, but I demand perfection. 
ready. So you will be the ones I'm forced ready. to poke my specific body holes is in the theories when the time comes. Now, with everything recapped and outlined, let's get into today's good shit. Throw it all at me! Throw the good it. shit at We've me! We've established pretty well that the DreamWorks moon is the ultimate Throw sky god, shit or possibly me. the entire pantheon itself. Maybe some sort of elaborate space station spotlight, if hints in my last video were any indication. There's a whole point I even referenced about an intelligent animal, Vincent, eating it like a sentient food. But the one thing I've been planning on covering for a while now is the symbolism behind each intro sequence. You've all been pleading for this as well, so I'll go fast. In Shark Tale, the fisherman uses a sentient worm. If you keep digging in Shrek 3, a bunch of thunderclouds cover the moon with a ray of sunshine beaming down on a critical footman. In the B-movie, straight up Mort theory madness occurs when Seinfeld assaults the gods and steals their throne. Like, honest to god, tell me, if Seinfeld's this is truly the moon, then how do they sit on it? Dude, listen. Okay, this, we gotta, we gotta be a little bit, we gotta, we gotta take this one with some salt, dude. Seinfeld's always fucking some shit up, so, you know, we can't just, this could be, this could mean something, but it could also just be Jerry Seinfeld inserting himself like he usually does. Steals you know? their throne, like honest to God, tell me, if this is truly the moon, then how do they sit on it? Kung Fu Panda straight up has no sky gods even left, of course, and Madagascar 2 has the animal's secret weapon, the penguins ambush and presumably murder the fishermen. Monsters vs. Aliens ties the aliens back into this theory when they attack the gods. That is absolutely what happened. The penguins of Madagascar absolutely took the, that fucking fish. He's like, he's like a 12 year old kid, dude, on the moon. The, the, the penguins snuck up behind him. They jumped him. They tied him up and they threw him into the fucking lake. That is absolutely what happened, dude. That is a, that is a, they got rid of the evidence by the th throwing in Rico's body. The penguins ambush and presumably murder the fishermen. Monsters vs. Aliens ties the aliens back into this theory when they attack the gods. And they straight up put the moon in space by how to train your dragon. Megamind proves every single point about the sky god's duality. Don't even try me. And Kung Fu Panda 2 returns with Ugwe the Usurper, or possibly Vern, as some theories say. Maybe more on that later. Rides of the Guardians, aligns the Guardians, the Croods. What the f**k? I told you cave people petroglyphically worship the gods. Sherman, get your ass out of here. We ain't through with you yet. Penguins, what the f Antarctic ice embedded shit. More alien abduction. Poe is relatable when he reaches enlightenment by fucking accident. Trolls music, boss baby human ties, and DreamWorks itself is the gods. That's why the moon is the first letter. They created humanity. Dreams work at nighttime. Oh Alright, so obviously God. I'm already derailing. So it did. Did. So when. So this whole time. This whole time, Andrew Tate screamed about the Matrix, it's been DreamWorks. We live in a simulation, simulated by fucking DreamWorks. Some of you are gonna have the same fate as Lord Farquaad. I hope you know that. I hope you, I hope you, dude, I hope you know that. Uh, dude, I, we know DreamWorks loves the Easter eggs, bro. We we know that we know we know DreamWorks loves the Easter eggs, dude. You know how instead instead of getting swallowed by a fire-breathing dragon, you just instantly die after getting T-boned at sixty miles an hour on the highway, and your entire call bursts into flames. That's what happens, dude. The gods. That's why the moon is the first letter. They created. This is fucked up. Dreams work at nighttime. All right, so obviously I'm already derailing. Let's slow back down and reel it back in by covering what my recent additions reveal. So, part 25, Kung Fu Panda is fascinating because in the event of a backwards timeline, yeah, I can see the possibility of Vern being Ugwe in some capacities, but I can't provide copious evidence for it. It would just be cool. What's more important here is the fact that the Chi is literal life force and we bear witness to some kind of heavenly afterlife. These are all central themes, but in a more literal lore sense, I believe that Kai is the key. He is among the last of his forces, reaping Chi with his devil horns to restore humanity. I want you to sit calmly and just think about that for a moment. It's all okay. literally true. This okay. fits beautifully on all levels. This guy is the last of the feet and he's a soul stealer. Legit. As far as Rise of the Guardians and Part 24 go, we already have, of course, covered most of it, but it's interesting that the Sandman is a kind of sun god, considering his boss is the opposite, and he makes dreams work. Allegedly, the books feature the moon being an alien, and the list goes on. 
but while it ties in its still dubious canon, the point is all the themes are continuous. See what I mean? This is what I'm saying. Y'all thought I was bullshitting at the beginning when I said, dude, I just randomly, magically spawned in a nightmare when I was sleeping, dude. I haven't had a dream in how fucking long. Maybe that's, dude, this shit's starting to make sense. This shit is starting to make sense, dude. Dream works, right? They are the controlling elite. They are the matrix, right? I don't dream because I am too powerful, right? They, I am not under their influence, dude. Maybe, maybe I'll start listening to me. Maybe I should become the new Andrew Tate, dude. Maybe I'm the one that's really got it all fucking figured. I'm about to whip my fucking shirt off right now. I'm about to, I'm about to whip my shirt off, light up a fucking doobie, and it just starts, just start spitting some bars, dude. Listen. All of DreamWorks films connect flawlessly, but we'll get specific with the logic segments. The, uh, the stuff most important to connect in here would be the new, new stuff. Ever since my Mort theories began, DreamWorks has been changing almost as if in response. This is proven by two. What is this movie? What is this? I've never seen this. I, the bad guys. I'm laying eyes on this for the very first time in my life. What is this? When did this come out, dude? How long has this been a thing? What? What? Dude, what did I miss? What the hell did I miss? Changing. What the hell is this? Respond. I don't like the way that spider's looking at me. I don't, I don't like, I don't like the way that spider's looking at me. And I don't like the way that shark's looking at me either. The shark looks like he really wants to take a bite out of me, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? He trying, he try, he try, he trying to get some buns today, dude. He trying, he trying to have, he trying to have some buns for breakfast. Golden buns of mine, dude. He's ready, he's ready to chop me down. Look at him. Look at his eyes, dude. What the hell is this? This is proven by two movies that I recently watched and were gobsmacked by. The Bad Guys Puss and Boots Puss in Boots 2. Is amazing. You see, my uh, DreamWorks theory is so perfect that it automatically answers any and every single unanswered question from these films. Watch me solve the entire Bad Guys in One Fell Swoop with Mort Theory right now. The Bad Guys opens up with a moon rock falling to earth. Oh, who is this? Oh, why is he built like that? He built like, he's, he's built like, if you got like a hole in your sock, you know what I'm saying? Right where like your middle toe is and your middle toe like sticks out of the end of your sock. That's what this guy looks like. Somebody's fucking toe wiggling. What the hell is this? Why does he look like that, dude? He, why is he built like a tampon? This obviously relates to the Sky Gods. The film is about a bunch of intelligent animals in a society mostly filled with humans. DreamWorks openly shows dumb animals too, even ones of the same species, and doesn't even try to explain it, because they already have. You see, later in the film, they reveal that the moon rock can augment consciousness and telepathy for animals, which leads me to believe that the moon has some connection to the animal's intelligence in this world. Duh. We also see a Duh. laboratory- Duh! Because the moon is the god! We know that, right? Where they are testing on animals- This all such. makes perfect sense to everybody, right? and it's possible this organization is feet. A crucial character in this film is a red-headed, physically enhanced police officer. These augmented animals oh. sing many times during police chases, critical scenes here, right? Giving animals like human intelligence, play. scientifically or otherwise, puts them on par. But just like in Monsters vs. Aliens, there seems to be a power struggle within characters. Like Wolf with his instincts to wag his tail. Do I need to watch this? Be honest. Do I gotta watch this, dude? Is this a, is this, is this, what, what level are we ranking this on? Where are we putting this, where are we putting this movie amongst the others, dude? Where does this rank amongst the likes of, of Shrek and Madagascar? And, and, and Ice Age 2? Where does this rank? 
a critical plot point, the Sky Gods and Mort seem to be tugging at each other's forces, trying to convert them. The Sky Gods insidiously preach love, and the Moon Rock is even a heart, but it's all a lie. See, it all explains how Kung Fu Panda animals could damn well be humans mentally, animals physically. Another linchpin, this insidious infusion, filling animals with compassion and the human genome. Likewise, this gerbil uh, character's butler has literally been brain swapped with the gerbil. Do not tell me this isn't the case. I told you I have all the answers. There are so many big moon shots. Ew! Why does he look like that? That is horrifying! Why does he look like that? This isn't the case. I told you I have all the answers. There are so many big moon shots in this film. There's this new organization called SUCM, which is dead ass just feet. They're even ripping me off while they suck them feet. And consciousness and so Who's su wait a minute, who's sucking on some feet? Wait a minute. Who whoa 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 M which is dead ass just feet. They're even ripping me off while they suck em feet. And they rip Theorizer, dude! They ripping you off while they sucking on some feet? Is there something you would like to share with us? Is there a, is this your is this your coming out story? Are you are you uh, Do you d Theorizer? What's going on, man? What is your what is your true what is your true obsession with feet, dude? Be real now. What we just hold it, dude. We're, who's sucking on some, we're sucking on feet now. SUCM, which is dead ass just feet. They're even ripping me off while they suck them feet. And consciousness implantation is the same pattern as to how they implant Megamind's brother into the fish's brain. This film explains it, and other films explain this. Beautiful. But Puss in Boots. Now they're really going suck on. on feet, Alright, so DreamWorks has changed their whole animation style and film messages in the past three years or so. It was good that I waited, because in Puss in Boots 2 we see the wish- Oh yeah, dude! Do, do I really want to go down that path, dude? He's he's talking about DreamWorks has, has changed their messaging, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. A lot of people will tell you, man. Now really going all out. All right, so DreamWorks a has lot changed of people their whole animation you. style and film messages in the past three years. Puss in Boots was voiced by a person of color, dude. DreamWorks has officially gone woke. Go woke, go broke, dude. So, it was good that I waited, because in Puss in Boots 2, we see the wishing star that Fiona wished upon falling to Earth and proceeding to attract a few dozen criminals to wish upon it with the beautiful little song. This is the Sky Gods. And if you haven't seen the film, you're about to be blown the f away because uh, DreamWorks has made the executive decision to, for the first time in almost 30 years, introduce a character that is none other than the for himself who I sh you not introduces himself as you death I don't mean it metaphorically or rhetorically or poetically or theoretically or in any My other fucking way. god death straight up who did they put up against the Grim Reaper who did they put up against him why the only character I've treated as more of an enigma than Mort Puss in Boots this is insane dude we got to dude, we've got, we've got Mort fighting against feet, fighting against death himself, fighting against puss and boots. What is going on, dude? Like, is this even allowed? Is this, is this type of warfare even allowed, dude? Like, what about collateral damage? Has anybody thought of that? The one who transcends cannons to sing in the spin-off. This wolf is either a Sky God proxy or a direct fragment of Mort. There's no disproving going on here, it all just really confirms it. He's much alike Pitch Black or Kai from Kung Fu Panda. Moons resemble scythes too, the figure of death. And this is proven outright and utterly by the fact that he's a wolf and Puss is a cat. In many cultures, notably that of Puss, the Grim Reaper takes the form of the thing the victim fears most. It's a cliche cat versus dog. Dead ass fragment. Just like the wishing star, or the literal voices Dead in Puss's ass, head that the wolf so aggressively smashes because it reminds him of himself reabsorbing, perhaps? Yes! But don't even get me started on Jack Horner. I hate this! He's the most based f***er this side of the inverted timeline, who Dude, is so feet that it isn't even funny freak. because he somehow incorporates. <laughs> This 
This guy's a fucking freak. This guy freaks me out so, like, just looking at him. I got the heebie-jeebies. I got goosebumps on my goosebumps, dude. Like, I feel funny every time I think about this fucking guy. This guy creeps me the hell out, dude. He creeps me the fuck out. F her, this side of the inverted timeline, who is so feet that it isn't even funny because he somehow incorporates everything but the Ugh. French connection. He is the living embodiment of what I described footmen to be. He steals all of the magical artifacts, including the godmother's wand. He wants all the power in the world, and at the end, he is crushed into the wishing star itself, which would imply by my theories that he either becomes a god, or depending on the timeline, has been the creator and head of feet this whole time. Of course, dude! Of course the fat-ass kingpin-looking dude is the one running the show, dude! It's always some big, like, seven-foot, 400-pound, balding, bowling ball in a suit that's running the show. Every single time. Every single time. Everybody's main super villain is always a bald guy in a suit, dude. This guy's balding. He's not always bald. But he's, he's, he's built like a bowling ball. Every time, dude. Literally every single time. He screams in this film, I hate talking fairy tale animals. Again, as if DreamWorks has seen my videos. He wants to be the bad guy. Awful man. I love it. He's he like quotes himself as being British dead inside, guy, much like Mort. He's like, he's like, he like, he's he's like, if you asked Americans to just say jokes about British people, right? Like the most stereotypical, like you know, just goofy jokes about British people. It's this guy. Like, look at how he's dressed, dude. He's got the George Washington wig on, and he's wearing heeled boots. Like, you telling me this guy's got a red coat? Come on now. Look at his, look at his teeth. Like, he's literally, like, he's literally. Awful. Literally. Man. I love it. He quotes himself as being dead inside, much like Mort, and he's immune to the puppy's powers. This cute little dog seems to be sort of the opposite of death, also a dog, but the side of the coin that ultimately saves Puss in Boots' soul. They're telling us something here, DreamWorks. You sussy sacks of shit. Puss in Boots sings and dances like the pattern he is, and he joins a retirement home that weakens cats run by a woman named Luna. Like the moon? Holy shit! Jack Horner's base is an industrial machine akin to mankind's advancement or lack thereof. Jack wears devil horns like the Horner- Serious question, right? We're gonna we're gonna take a little tangent here for a second. Do you think all this is on purpose? Do you think all of this is on purpose? All of these little tiny convenient little coincidences of things that are just so happen to perfectly match up across movies, across timelines, across universes, dude. Do you think DreamWorks does this? Like, do you think they know what they're doing? Or is this, is this just us losing our fucking minds? Or is this just, is this just us losing our damn marbles, dude? We're all, we're all deprived of sanity. He is, this man straight up being the do the roar kid head ass. Did they resurrect Mama Bear? Puss, nine lives because of the resurrection gods. This is the man after him. Jack sacrifices so many people in this movie. The Bakers doesn't like the Muffet Man who burnt Puss earlier to make the sacrificial foodstuffs. Fairy Godmother's wand is a piece of the wishing star. <sighs> I'm reaching a threshold of insanity. I've Not reached a few thresholds if you want to go there. Human minds. I have predicted the I next hundred years thresholds. of thresholds. This is my breaking point. Ready for the things I forgot in part 23? <sighs> Go. I believe the reason the fairy godmother's magic was reflected off of Harold is because he was wearing the royal outfit. Yes, the same royals who notoriously hated the fairy godmother and probably infused their clothing with defense mechanisms against her magic. Who knows? Maybe Charming's their son. It wasn't reflected though, was it? Didn't he literally get turned into a fucking frog? <coughs> See? They're coming after me, dude. 
likely infused their clothing with defense mechanisms against her magic. Who knows? Maybe Charming's their son, and she kidnapped him from birth like the fairy changeling bitch she is. Though I've no Charming's also for that. a freak. Why am I going off the rails of stable psyche? This is about to implode. Ah, uh, just the thing to ease my mind. Do you know what the word lemur means in Madagascar's language? Ghost. Lemur means Why do you just know language. that lemur in Latin actually Go. means ghost? I hate this. I hate every minute of this. If you just explain these things to just some random person, they will call the police on you, but you're right! You would be right, dude! What the hell? Ghost. <laughs> Makes sense, given that Alex's oh, help no. sign degraded into the hellish truth. And get a load of this shit. A group of dogs is called a pack, right? A group of birds is called a flock? Well, I sh you not. Do you know what a group of crows is called? A group of lemurs is called a conspiracy. Dude, there's no way. There's literally no way. There's literally no way this is a thing. There's literally no fucking way. A group of... Dude. I'm gonna go jump off of a bridge, dude. Jesus! Jesus! We need Jesus! Train your dragon that the Night Furies are spawns of death. Mort likes souls because he's after the souls of someone's foot. When Donkey transforms back with the Sky God's magic, he literally gets picked up and dropped callously as if an invisible god is taunting him. Nana's dog has lived for decades because she's a footman with access to life extension. Basically, every DreamWorks film ends with a damn dance sequence. Nana is the Statue of Liberty, a copper French icon. Dr. Cockroach says his PhD is in dance as he unlocks the alien ship, which is somehow locked with a musical mechanism plus I get this get this and you dance with your feet this is why i didn't want to watch any of the spin-off shows Don't he say literally it. resurrects <laughs> pineapple Demon pineapple finally in part 23 i just What is happening to me? Discussed how the Muffin Man. It's been so long since I felt like this, dude. Shrek is actually a part of Feet and is a key member in the creation of sentient food stuff. I have come to the conclusion that he is a terroristic warlord out to destroy the monarchy. The the Muffin Man is a terroristic warlord sent to destroy the monarchy. That's kind of based, if you ask me, dude. Oh my god, that's crazy. That is, ins that is an insane... Do you know the Muffin Man? I don't think I want to. I don't think I want to. You remember when Quavo sang that song? He was like, I'm the baker's mat skirt. Now you want a list at Homeland Security's front desk, dude. The hell? Answer, milk. As I berated the Muffin Man on Twitter, you- N Milk? Okay. I don't like- I don't like milk being involved in a discussion about feet. I don't like this. I don't like where this is going. And the Muffin Man. I don't like where this is going. I do not like where this is going. Warlord out to destroy the monarchy. The answer, milk. As I berated the Muffin Man on Twitter, user funny name pointed out what many in the comment sections have also observed, that, um, the tub of milk is just waiting there? They have it already! Oh, prepped! 
Hot milk to fight Mongo? I do believe this is because the Muffin Man is a repeat threat. He must have some... They had the milk! <coughs> Where did it go? You are so right! You are so right! Why would they just have the milk ready to go? Why would they just know to be prepared for a possible giant gingerbread attack, dude? It's because they've been there before. They've already dealt with it, dude. They've already for they know. Because the Muffin Man has a history of shenanigans and antics. A uh, uh, history, dude. A uh, history. You remember 9-11? That's the real conspiracy, dude. Everybody says Bush did it. It was an inside job. I think it was the Muffin Man. The hell? Sort of an enormous industrial crematorium in his fucking basement in order to create such a giant gingerbread man. Nobody has questioned this until now. The Muffin Man is a critical footman. Speaking of the Muffin Man and milk, String theory. By string theory, I mean answers. By answers, I start with the alien genome. So here's a critical question. Why do several important footmen all look so similar? The answer seems to be, but again... They the jaw, dude. That's what it is. It's the jaw. They've all, they, they all look like Jay Leno. Every single one of them. Every single one of them. Why do several important footmen all look so similar? The answer seems... Uh the cop lady from fucking the the fucking the cop with the curly hair with the baton could beat my ass any day dude that one she looks like jay leto too used to be but again they all share a dress code this is of course more proof for it all being an organization jay leno, look at that. said it's coincidence so is there any possible way i can prove to you all that it is objective yes see this is where markiplier comes into the theory what Oh my god, dude. What is happening? Why? What? How did Markiplier get involved? How the hell did... What? How the hell in the, in the universe did Markiplier get roped into this? Markiplier, I went on a date with this man. Twice. And you're telling me, dude, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if my heart can handle this, right? My soul left seven episodes ago, okay? So, seven parts ago, part 21, I was, my soul was gone. My brain left after part three. All I have left is my heart. This could truly be the end of me, dude. What the hell is Markiplier doing in a Mark theory? This individual has, for lack of a better description, been assimilated by the meme cult in real life. Markiplier is, of course, the famous YouTube gamer, who has been memed repeatedly in the form of various DreamWorks characters. When I say real-life meme cult, I'm exaggerating. I, of course, am referencing the real-world nature of comedians and speaking truth to power or whatever sh**. More simply put, the internet has joked continuously about Markiplier looking like tons of different DreamWorks characters. I mentioned this in part 21 as well. They all look the same. There's even one in the bad guys to the point where so many collectively agree and just make fun of it. And thus, my usage of their dress code evidence and- Are, Do not drop this bomb on me and sit here and tell me that fucking Markiplier, that Markiplier is the puppet master pulling the strings here. Don't tell me that. I will lose my mind. I will I will lose my marbles. All of them. Make fun of it. And thus, my usage of their dress code evidence and them looking similar and being a part of the same thing is fairly valid because it's not just me saying it. People have seen it so much that it's become a genuine meme. It's there and everyone sees it. Therefore, it's objective. I do also find it phenomenally strange that the letter M is central to all the linchpins I've been covering in these videos. Music, memes, magic, Madagascar, moon, mort, mutation, medieval, and of course, misotheory, the hatred of And of animal. course, multiverse of pure madness! Of course, mad scientist! You forgot that part! Murder! That's a group of crows, by the way, for a little bit earlier.
Mommy, that's what I need right fucking now, dude. Magic, Madagascar, Moon, Mort, Mutation, Medieval, and of course, Mizotheory, the hatred of animals, keeps going and going and going in Markiplier, and it's coincidental to the point where I've considered just renaming this whole thing to M-Theory, more commonly known as String Theory itself, as this is the DreamWorks theory of everything. Oh, perfection. Perfection! <laughs> We've done it. The evidence has reached completion. I thought I promised answers, Have we though. figured oh, yeah, it all out, finally? With all that said, all this updated evidence, those final connections, there seems to be something going on here. And I'm going to figure out what it is right now. It's time for the big answers. Not that I even have questions to base them off of. At it's this point, all up, dude. We, it's all led up to this, dude. We're so, we're getting the, this is all going to come to an end. This, this is, this is all going to come to an end, dude. Like I said, if anybody is going to achieve world domination, it's going to be me. It's going to be me. Theorizer's doing all the heavy lifting and I'm just going to take all of the publicity for it, dude. It'll work out beautifully. Something's all wrong with this picture. Something catastrophic that must be uncovered before the logic segments. Some ultimate solution that's being dangled under my nose. <laughs> if things truly are backwards, maybe... Wait, have Who I got is this it wrong? fucking Indulge kid? Me. That's what we need to figure out. Who the hell? Whose kid is this? And where is his parents? And what the hell you doing all day sitting on the moon fishing? You ain't got no, you, you don't go to school? You don't got no job? Who are you? Who is this kid? I mean, could Mort really be with feet? And the animals really be with the gods? The moon, the magic industrialization? Am I, am I losing it here? There's, you see, there's so much shit that can push it in either direction. Same for the morals and the timeline. But there are prevailing patterns. You see why this is, this is why we need the logic segments. It's becoming ever clearer that both ways could be possible on all fronts. Still, it's not the linchpin I've been looking for. If all this combines, Moore is still not the hero. This has officially been proven. There, there are no exact heroes here. That's moderately devastating. But again, bringing this together, the reversal, if the timeline is both backwards and forwards. Chicken perhaps, run! Somehow, not based on Stop, events, dude! Rather... Stop! There's no chicken run! Chicken run is not involved, dude! Wallace and Gromit, leave them alone, dude. They minding their own business. My are minding their own business, dude. They just, they just dropped, they just dropped the new, the new trailer for the new one. And you're not going to ruin this for me. I'm not letting you ruin it for me. With the movie release dates, that would explain the claymation and the 2D. It explains the newfound change in dimensionality and the low frame rates of 2020's DreamWorks edginess. Uh, this is a factor to be discussed, of course. But is it that linchpin I've been looking for? No. What's the plotline of every single DreamWorks film? Villains getting sick of their own evil. They don't want to be the bad guys anymore. I had this all written, and then I watched the I don't know about that, dude. I don't know about that, dude. Because the queen was pretty fucking evil. The queen was a raging bitch, if you ask me, dude. The, I don't know about that one. I, I mean, I know a lot of them, a lot of them realized that they didn't want to be bad. There were a few of them that were just, just pure, pure assholes. Just for, be, just for the sake of being assholes. Bad guys anymore. I had this all written, and then I watched the new DreamWorks film where they took this and ran with it. They are opening up because everyone's ready. And this is why Jack Horner was so bluntly evil. The point was, he was unabashedly bad, unashamedly evil. This is the DreamWorks. Stop showing me that guy. Can you, like, uh, he's, uh, he's, why does he, why do you keep showing me him? Why do you keep showing me this guy? Unashamedly bad, unashamedly evil. This is the DreamWorks plot. The catastrophic clash of life and death, of good and of evil, spanning timelines, canons, and dimensions, as the beauty of death meets the suffering of life, and it brings destruction for the humans, animals, and aliens, and organizations all caught in the middle. I would say there is hope if bad guys seek redemption, but genomes are infusing, manipulations are occurring, 
If there's one colossal element that will doom everything, it's partly because this is all Mort's story. You see, Mort doesn't just seem to be one facet of this mayhem. He's the dreamer dreaming the dreamworks. We saw this in All Hail, but what I learned from the Horseman Hypothesis of Part 23 is that he's not just a clown, but the entire circus. Mort is the sentient embodiment of the biblical apocalypse. He's not... That is insane. That is insane. Mort is the physical embodiment of the biblical apocalypse. Dude, I want that title. That's hard as hell. 23. That he's not just a clown, but the entire circus. Mort is the sentient embodiment of the biblical that apocalypse. Wild. He's not merely death, but all four horsemen. This is why everything, despite pantheon vibes, still rings true of Christianity elements because he is the end of days. He has a bottomless stomach like famine. Oh He's a genetically heaven. anomalous mutated super virus that spreads across the multiverse like a pestilence. And he's a damn motherfucking war criminal. Mort is the doom of us all. He is the apocalypse. I've been screaming we are all doomed every single intro for these videos and y'all have been like fucking listening to me. Y'all were not listening to me and now he's the apocalypse and I was right. Nanny nanny bobo. But he's I a told you. And fits so cleanly into their alignment not simply because he's the dreamer, but also because of his roles in the story, it can only mean one thing. Mort is not some foreign eldritch entity, but was a sky god himself. What Where is, he is Jesus? He'll put it into all this. Hey? Where is, where is, where is Moses? We come from, there are mangoes in the air. He was one of them. He was a sky god. The god of the apocalypse. It's the only thing that fits all the evidence. This also explains death offshoots as subordinates, but what purpose does this serve? Well, that's a bit clearer, as any tale will tell you. He must be the old one. The combination, the most powerful, the... Oh. The original. This is fucked oh, up. Their creator. Notice how he created his own pantheon, <laughs> not to emulate the sky gods, but because he created them too. Dude, why? Why has this guy? How did we get to this point, dude? Mort is the god of apocalypse and created all of the other sky gods within the universe. He is the original god. He is, he's the original one. Dude, this is... This is some Naruto shit, dude. Oh my god. They represent the real fruits around him in his actual 3D world. They are his true children. They are his undoing, resulting in one final fundamental truth. The sacrificial fruits eaten. Mort ate the lesser gods, and so they shattered him across the void in trillions of pieces. He wields the scythe. He transcends the outers of space and the timeless timeline. Oh his my fucking God, so he's trying to get all the other ones to get back to being a what? Legend spreads out to the animal soldiers of the world and his mortal enemy, the pineapple, just so happens to be the one who takes his place as the leader. Pineapple, fruit that represents kings, father of the gods, titan of time. Mort is Kronos. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I can't. I'm done. I can't. Kronos! Kronos! What? Kronos! Fucking Kronos! The literal most like the GOAT, dude! Like, he's him, dude! Kronos is that guy! That's fucked, dude. This is- Kronos. I can't, dude. 
Kronos is him! <laughs> Kronos is him! <laughs> That's what I saw in the night. This is what I saw in my nightmare. You may think we're at the end of the video. We're not. I'm sweating. Can you see? Can you see? The connection segments are finally coming to a close in spite what do you of the mean? fact there are likely millions done. more connections to be had, even in the logic segments. If you haven't joined my Patreon, do so as soon as you can. Things are finally, finally heating up over there, and you'll be the first to know things. If you do, it might, might start physics videos over there. Who knows? But before you go, one last thing almost forgot. Do you still somehow not believe that the gods and feet even exist? No, no, I believe it. I believe it. Trust me, I believe it. Well, I remembered one of the later entries in I fucking believe it. Lore. A short film DreamWorks made called Thriller Night. It starts by literally opening up with the DreamWorks moon fading into a real moon, which implies that the Sky Gods are about to do something big. We're back in Far Far Away for some reason, and Shrek comes barreling out of a movie theater screaming for the love of Jinji. He's terrified and crying because they just watched some sort of musical in the theater and found it to be a completely harrowing experience. As you may recall, this is due to music being the universal language. Shrek wanted something more creepy because it's apparently Halloween night. He says he wants zombies or something, and Donkey says that zombies can't sing, which is apparently something he knows about. Supernatural life granted with music? Well, Puss in Boots compromises and performs a scary musical to which suddenly the entire world's lights go out and everyone starts singing. This is poetry between opposing forces, the horror of Mort, and the memes of the gods. Yes, Shrek gets mad and says, You know how I feel about spontaneous musical outbursts. Yes, Shrek, how does that make you feel? Everyone around them also starts singing and then we see a nearby graveyard where all of the members of Feet literally rise from their grave. Does this mean... Does this mean... That High School Musical is a school full of terrorists. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you're telling me? All of them! This is Supernatural Life extension in full effect, and music is in control. A zombified Pied Piper arrives and starts playing Thriller by Michael Jackson. Shrek then realizes his entire family has been zombified as well, and everyone starts dancing in synchronicity. Shrek is being controlled as well, and he says, Oh no, not this, not... Dancing! They finish the song, Shrek snaps the pipes, and then all of his zombified friends corner him and try eating him like the sacrificial onion he is before the absolutely unthinkable happens. We zoom out of Shrek's mouth, and he's screaming as loud as he can. It zooms out in the exact same identical way that it did in Shrek 4, following his return to his universe. If you recall, I determined with great accuracy that this was all the doing of the Sky Gods who put him in a hell loop. We see here that Shrek is in fact they put him in a genjutsu! That's crazy! Through the previews the for the musical. These, they're, they're hypnotizing my man! And the whole thing was a nightmare that ended in the exact same way as his previous hell. Did the sky gods give me that? Did. When I told y'all about that nightmare, y'all thought I was fucking around. Y'all thought I was fucking around, and now he's sitting here saying all this shit, did it, did fucking did it to me. Loop, which is merely the cherry on top of this mountain of evidence that proves this whole thing was a setup by the Sky Gods to torment his protagonistic self once again. Shrek then realizes the previews are just ending, which means the musical has yet to even truly begin, and he screams yet again, meaning this entire overall situation is a hell loop in which he's forced to watch a musical. This, this is the whole theory right here. Thriller Night is a musical hell loop in the moonlight that is memeing Thriller, which itself is the modern dance macabre, and all of the footmen are being resurrected oh to torment an intelligent beast. God! The proof is absolute. It's being displayed on full effect. What started as a DreamWorks joke has supplanted itself into their subconscious, and now they can't help but fill their- What started as just a ooh, silly little reaction video, a little more, dude, turned into my worst nightmare. That's what this has turned into! Films with feet. Any further connections come from you guys. Comment everything and await the logic segments, no matter how long it takes. Any further it connection Mort will is send the me demon into a King spiral. The multiverse locked in a battle with his interdimensional children and their international cult. And if you don't believe it at this any, point, any further evidence will plunge society into hell. Point, then you're crazy. This is fucked up on so many varying. Levels, dude. I don't know how we could get any further than
than this. I don't know how we can get any further than this. I thought the end of it would just be, oh yeah, dude, Mort is an interdimensional, multiversal, godlike being sent to destroy humanity, and he's beefing with the feet people. And that's it, dude. But no, it turns out that he is the god of apocalypse himself, Kronos, and that the sky gods are using dance and feet to torment the, the intelligent being. I can't do this, dude. I, my brain, we took, a, we took a break from this. Took a very long extended break from this to try to rejuvenate our energies, our spirits, our chi, dude. And I, st I don't think we, I don't think we was enough. I don't think it was enough. Well, what the hell we, and this is not done apparently. Apparently this is still not the fucking finale, dude. I don't know what the hell else we got going on here, dude. But there is no way that this gets any better at all.